All right, mate, how's it going? In today's video, it's chapter 16 of Tides of Darkness by Aaron Rosenberg. A lot of meanwhiles in this one again. Like I said, the rest of this book is absolutely mental. Let's go. He be rolling down the street. He be rolling to the beat. He be rolling down the street. Sawyer, Sawyer, the orcs are coming. What? Here. Yes, Sawyer. King Terranis could see just how pale and scared his guard commander Morev looked. He was a seasoned veteran and yet he looked absolutely bloody terrified. They must have come across the mountains. They're pouring onto the far side of the lake even as we speak. Terranus then brushed past the commander and strode out of his throne room, with Marev following closely behind, probably wondering where the hell they were going. They made their way up some stairs, entered the queen's drawing room. Leanne was in there, as was the princess Kalia, and both of them looked a bit surprised to see Terranus at this time of day. I was supposed to be at work. But the king stepped past them, and out onto a balcony that overlooked Lordomir Lake, and then stopped, stunned. There they were. The Horde had indeed arrived. How did this happen? Why did Perinold not stop them cold? They must have overwhelmed him. A competent troop could have held the Horde back, but not if they were following incompetent orders. Terranus frowned and shook his head. Perinold was indeed a selfish, scheming dumbass that would probably issue incompetent orders, but Hath, the Alterac general, was a good man, a solid warrior, he would have assembled a solid defense. Send messages to Alterac, and to the Alliance army as well. Let them know our situation. We'll find out what happened later. But first things first, rally the guards, sound the alarm, get everyone inside the gates. We don't have much time. Sometime later, pigeons were sent out to other Alliance leaders as well as the last known location of the Alliance army. And one of those pigeons flew straight to Stromgard. And its message had just been relayed to Thoris Trollbane. What? Thoris had been drinking, so he was especially pissed off by this news. That fool! What did he do? He let him through, didn't he? Thoris despised Perinald. Not just because they were neighbours, and so there was a bit of rivalry. He just straight up didn't like the bloke personally. He was a creep. Oily. Sniffed his own farts. But even an arrogant prick like Perinald should have been able to block an invading army. Maybe not stop them completely, but at least slow them down. Damn him. We should have held them. He should have warned us. Suddenly, a thought struck Thoris, right in the brain. Perinald had never been that enthusiastic about the Alliance. Him and Greymane had been the only two to resist, but the Ultraac leader had disliked the idea of combat completely, even suggesting they try negotiating first. Oh, you traitorous little fool. You made a deal with him, didn't you? You flaccid penis. Thoris kicked a chair and turned to one of his guards. Assemble the troops. We're going to Ultraac. Sire, we've already sent out half our troops to the Alliance army. We'll grab everyone you can find. For what, Sire? Are we lending them aid? <laughs> yeah, in a manner of speaking. Meanwhile, Lothar was currently stood with a bunch of other soldiers surrounded by orc corpses. It had been pretty much non-stop battles for him and his half of the Alliance forces that had stayed behind. This was a very rare and very appreciated opportunity for them to catch their breath for the first time in a while. How many of these things are there? Too many, but fewer now, eh? Lothar grinned, and the men smiled back at him, but that little moment was interrupted by some rustling in the bushes, followed by a figure bursting out upon them. But luckily, it was just a blow. Messages, sir. Thanks. Maybe don't jump out of bushes on armed soldiers, lad. Lothar then studied the message, and his jaw tightened. What is it, sir? The Horde. They've made their way to Lordaeron. They're likely attacking the capital this very moment. Well... What do we do? We have to set out right away. No, it's too much distance. We never reach it in time. We need to finish our work here. Make sure the orcs left in the hinterlands are dead or driven off. We cannot allow them to retain a foothold here. The soldiers nodded, but they didn't look happy. Not anymore. Both I could hardly blame them. Jorellian and the rest of the army are already on their way. They will come to the city's aid. And when we're done here, we'll march to capital city and mop up any orcs that are left. Another meanwhile, Thoris Trollbane now stalked across the mountains with his men behind him, clearing each of the Ultrak passes of orcs as they went. But it wasn't until the fifth pass that Trollbane finally came across human soldiers. Ultrak soldiers. Hold. State your name and business here. Thoris Trollbane, King of Stromgard. Where is Perinold? He's... He's in his castle. You're trespassing. And the orcs? Are they trespassing? Or are they guests? 
The orcs won't pass us. We'll defend this pass with our lives. Good. Only they're not at this pass. They're at the far south of here. That startled the soldiers somewhat. But we were stationed here. This is where they said the orcs would be. Well, they're not. Fortunately, my men are now blocking those southern passes. But many already made it through. To Lordaeron. Where's General Hath? He's at the next pass. I'll take you there. And so he did. After about an hour, they reached the next pass, and the soldier that had accompanied them approached the general and announced their arrival. Your Majesty. General, the orcs were pouring through your southern passes. We blocked them for you. Hath's face paled. Our southern passes? Y you're sure? You're a fine soldier and a good commander, Hath. But you've always been a terrible liar. You knew, didn't you? The general then sighed and nodded. Perinold made some kind of deal with them. Free passage in exchange for protection. And you went along with it. If the Horde conquers Lordaeron, they'll control the entire continent. What made you think you'd be safe? I... I don't know. The leader gave Perinold his word, but I don't know what that's worth. I told Perinold we should abide by our oaths to the other nations, but he countermanded that. I swore fealty to him. I must obey. Plus, I thought he might be right. But what good is the survival of just one kingdom? If we don't have our honour, we've nothing at all. The general's demeanour then changed. He went from defiance to defeat to now somewhat emboldened in the space of about 30 seconds, and then turned to his men. Everyone, we march to the southern passes at top speed. We're going to assist our friends. He then turned back to Thorus. He's in the castle. His personal guard are there, but there's only 20 of them. No, we don't have time to worry about him now. Besides, if I go there, it's an invasion. If you go there, it's treason. We'll let the Alliance settle matters with Perinold later. A goddamn another, meanwhile. Damn it! We're too late! Drellian and his peeps had rode very, very hard, and were now staring at the valley below. The Horde had crossed the lake, and they had Capital City absolutely surrounded. They haven't breached the walls. It's not yet too late to aid them. No, you're right. The battle's not lost yet. Hell, we may even have an advantage. They don't know we're here yet. If we could let Terranus know we're here, we could coordinate our attacks. A fine plan, but how would you suggest we reach the city? No one could make it through all of them unharmed. Not even an elf. It would be suicide to attempt it. Khadgar then grinned at the three of them. I can get across. With a little help. Sire, up there. Terranus looked at where the soldier was pointing and gasped. Ready the archers, but hold fire until my command. There was something a little bit strange about the approaching unidentified flying object. Why would the orcs send a single flyer when there were thousands upon thousands of them smashing against the walls below? They were kind of beyond the point of sending scouts and shit. The shape then got closer, and Terranus could finally see that it was a griffin, with a bloke on its back. Lower your weapons. It's a friendly. Kagar then landed the griffin on the ramparts, let out a sigh of relief and kind of thanked it under his breath, and then turned to face the king. What are you doing here? I come bearing good news. Duralian and his forces are just the other side of the Northern Valley. They will attack the Horde from behind and draw them away from you. That is good news. With the Alliance army here, we can attack them from two fronts and batter them. That's the plan. Kurdran loaned me as Griffin, so I could reach you and coordinate. I'm just glad I still remember how to ride one after. Come, my servants will take care of the Griffin. Tell me what Duralian thinks we should do next. Fucking charge! Drellian and his forces raced down the hill and smashed the Horde's back doors in, and as the orcs turned to meet them, catapults and arrows and ballista fired upon them from the city. So for a moment, the orcs looked really annoyed and confused about what the hell they were supposed to do. Face the Alliance soldiers, the city struck them from behind. Face the city, the Alliance soldiers struck them from behind. But the Horde had huge numbers. They had bodies to spare, so to speak. Some orcs started forcing themselves at the Alliance army, forcing the humans to backpedal. Whilst at the other end, some orcs threw themselves at the city walls and the city gates. The gates! They're starting to give way! And we're leaving it there! So I did skip a few little things in that one. Only fluff though. There's a few paragraphs early on about Lordaeron throwing oil and rocks over the walls and shiz and uh, that seemed like a lot of extra work for what would amount to about 20 seconds of the video. So I skipped it. As usual, links in the description for the book, my Patreon page, my Discord, all of that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!